everybody, my name is Todd Phelps. I am with Indiana Scientific Paranormal Investigators, also known as Indiana Spy. And I'm Tobin Wilkerson, I'm with Quest Paranormal. I formed the group in around 2005, and we've been investigating ever since. Our main goal, though, is to help people. That's what we're all about. We're doing this because we want to help people. And we do this as a totally volunteer thing. We have real regular, regular full-time jobs that we do during the week, and this is all a hobby. Now, the big question is, why do you become a paranormal investigator? The main reason, and for both of us, is that we've had paranormal experiences that we couldn't explain. That's why we use these ambient thermometers, the one down here with the probe that he's circling, measures the temperature right in a certain area. These, the main reason that we use it is because sometimes you'll get a draft, not only a cold spot, but you'll feel a breeze. So in order to debunk that breeze, you maybe want to check the windows, see if there's a cold temperature coming from there, check the doors, check the ceiling, things like that. So this, this is still a handy tool, and it'll help you determine whether there are drafts coming in that are causing these cold spots that you're feeling. So they are pretty useful still. Now, there's a theory out there that spirits will give off what's called an electromagnetic field. Uh, it's believed that when they try to manifest themselves, they take the energy from whatever they can, be it batteries, uh, air around them, what have you, and, and try to, to manifest themselves, creating a, a small magnetic field. So, um, and the reason that we use them, obviously, is for EVP. For anybody that doesn't know what EVP is, that stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. And what it is, when you record in a room, and you don't hear something, but when you play it back, you hear a voice or some semblance of a voice. Then there's also spectral sounds, which might be a sound that you're hearing, but you cannot find a natural reason for that sound to be occurring. We take these everywhere we go because anything that happens, you want to document as much as possible. Not only on audio, but you want to try to get that on video as well. And what if you're walking around the corner and all of a sudden, just like in Ghostbusters, the giant spook with the books and everything is standing right in front of you. You kind of want to have a camera with you, just in case. Uh, another thing that we use is a DVR, and this also involves cameras, uh, specifically IR cameras that can see at night. When we talk about IR and night vision, those of you that do watch the ghost hunting shows, you see what looks like a kind of a greenish room that they're in, and they're, they're talking about how dark it is. It's actually pitch black in there. What you're seeing is what the camera can see. The IR is out of our visual <coughs> spectrum, so we cannot see that light. So if, you, if I was to plug in one of these IR cameras and turn it on, all you would see is little red dots. And if we face two of the cameras together, they would look like white dots at each other, looking at each other. But we can't see any of that light, so we're walking around usually in pretty much pitch black, just as TAPS or any of those other groups that are doing the ghost friendship. <coughs> so we take these cameras and we put them in a fixed position. We plug them into this little box down here called our DVR, and we record whatever those runs through those cameras. Usually we're looking for shadows that move through there, or a door shutting on its own, cabinets opening, chairs moving, uh, the various things that you've seen on Ghost Hunters or any of the other shows. Communication. Very, very key in ghost hunting. A lot of the times you'll be at a small location where you can only send a couple people in at a time. The reason you want to do that is because of contamination. Um, you don't want to have too many people on too many floors because every noise you hear, you might think is a ghost and it could just be somebody downstairs. That's why we have walkie-talkies. What happened was she heard me hit the click when I took the photo and she did not know I was on a night shot setting. So she walked into my shop thinking I was done. And this is what you get. You can actually see the corner of the window through her forehead. <clears throat> On the left here, you'll see that there are some dust orbs in here. And even this, this big one here even looks like there's a family standing in it. You kind of see a couple of kids and a person. But again, it's matrixing. But what we're really looking at is on the back wall. And if you'll notice, you've got all these shiny objects. You've got the dust work for the... Uh, flash to refract and reflect off of, plus there's plenty of dust there, obviously it is a dirt floor and we had just walked through there moments before taking the shot. And then on the back wall there, there's all these different bit bricks that were made in the front yard of Prospect Place Mansion back in the 1800s. So there's all kinds of different colors going on there too, there's reds and blacks and greens and browns and different shades. And if you look over here, you can actually see the shape of what looks like a head with some kind of alien eyes and an arm sticking out, looks like it may be holding something. Can you guys see that at all? The people in the <laughs> uh, Again, this is a bunch of dust orbs collecting together, and we have to say that we think it's most likely just matrix. This hallway that you're going to be looking at is in the complete darkness. 
Now we have one IR camera set on top of a pop machine looking down this hallway. The reason we had that is because there's a claim. One of the claims of activity that goes on at this place is that at the end of the hallway there's a door. There's plenty of doors down the hallway, but there's a door at the end of the hallway where it's said that a ghost will, if you're there or not, walk by you, go to the end of the stairs, stop, and then turn and walk down. So we said, okay, obviously we're going to put a camera here in case something happens. Now, also down at the end of that hallway, there was a door, supposedly, that was supposed to open and close by itself. So we had one IR camera looking down this hallway, and we had another IR camera down here looking this way. So you can, they're not pointed directly at each other, but you can see the light from the IR, other IR camera. That's important when you're watching the video evidence.